Without further ado, it's an honor for me as a minister. It's an honor for me as a person. It's a true honor, brothers and sisters, to ask Pastor Jennings to come up to be a part of this great ministry. Pastor Jennings, thank you very much. Greetings, brothers and sisters. As always, we thank the one true God for his divine wisdom and his perfect understanding of all things. We thank the one God for his guidance, his wisdom, his understanding, sending the holy prophets and the apostles to teach us the way of holiness. We are grateful to him for being the perfect an infallible God that he is. God have no flaws, God have no errors, and God never make mistakes. Amen. To all of our ministers, we thank God for you that are here, to our guests. I'm so grateful for God bringing us into another combined anniversary for Delmar and Baltimore. I believe this is the sixth anniversary for Baltimore and 20 years, if not more, for Delma. I'm glad for Brother Minister Craig <laughs> and Brother Minister Webb and Singletary and Brother Campbell and to all the brothers that are here so far and to our guests. You that are in the lower auditorium uh, that's not able to fit up here, we're glad for all of you. We had 11 souls went down last night in the name of Jesus Christ. The way of holiness is the best way. Amen. You can never be in it too long, and you can never hear it too much. Amen. It'll save your life because it has saved the lives of many thousands. Amen. And we are thanking God for it. Before going any further, uh, today will be the first day of service. I'm pretty sure Detroit is rejoicing. We made settlement on our new temple in Detroit, Michigan, two weeks ago, and the first service is being held today in the Fellowship Hall in Detroit. So that's a blessing. Our brothers there in Detroit didn't waste no time. They met, they was in settlement before we got there. And at the settlement, we went over to the new church. And beautiful place there, beautiful sized temple, beautiful sized parking lot. And we went over with the brothers, everything that we want to have done. And they text me the pictures last night. The lower auditorium is all set up, all repainted, chairs all set up, podium is there. First service is held. and. And they're jam-packed in there now while we speak. So it's a blessing. <laughs> to our viewing audience that watched this program in Detroit, the address of the new Detroit Temple is 1270, 1270 Waterman Street. Now you be there. Leave your churches. Now you can't make no excuse. You can fact, you can pack up right now. <laughs> While you're watching, getting your pants on, deek, deek, <laughs> just turn around and go to 1270 Waterman Street. The new church signs is being done now, and they'll be shipped down there, and they'll be put up, and the new church signs for the new Mobile Temple is almost done. The church signs for the new Portsmouth Temple is done. And uh, God willing, we're looking, we're looking to open up in Milwaukee, Chicago. We haven't forgot about you. I'll be flying to Chicago in a few more weeks through the week, looking at a good prospect of a new church in the Chicago area, and as well as so many other locations. I cannot say it enough. I wish I was a multi-millionaire. The people are hungry and they want to eat. And whether you realize it or not, God have made the truth of God a lighthouse. 
and it's shining brighter than anything else in America. Amen. Holiness has been downwatered and has been abused and misused by religion and preachers that have changed or sought to change the standard of God to their philosophy, to their ideology. But I'm glad for the truth of God. God made it such a, a beacon of light shining so bright everywhere. Amen. Until now, the preachers in so many organizations, before I came upstairs, I was talking to a pastor out of Austin, Texas. Uh, his bishop told him about us years ago. And his bishop passed away in 2008 came from under the refuge, churches of our Lord Jesus Christ, and Bishop Bonner organization. He said, Pastor Jennings, I'll be seeing you in two weeks in Dallas. He said, I told our congregation that we're coming to walk with the truth of God because I refuse to line myself up with any of the mess out here. Amen. Well, I'm hearing from quite a bit of bishops and elders, pastors, who were formerly under Bishop Bonner. And we also hearing from churches who was in this organization out of South Carolina, Progressive Church of our Lord Jesus Christ. The pastors and elders are contacting us from there, wanting to come and walk with the truth. I'm hearing from PAW pastors. UPC bishops, apostolic organizations I never heard of, some called the Apostolic Assembly. Bishops out of there are reaching out to us. Holiness is not being tampered with here. God left it holy and we're going to leave it the way God has it. In other words, if it was good enough for all the former apostles, the way Jesus gave it to them, no additives, no preservatives, didn't modernize nothing, well, we're going to leave it the same way. I want to say to all of our viewers in Miami, Florida, forgive us for not making it down there. Today I was supposed to be in Miami. I originally was going to let the ministers take this local church anniversary and we was going to be in Miami. But the Lord made changes. He brought that hurricane, beat down the Bahamas and went down to Florida and then it passed on. Well, they called us from Florida and said, well, it didn't do much damage, but it was too late. There's no way I was going to stand around and see what happened. But God willing, Miami, we'll be back down there. We'll, 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 we'll come back. We'll get down there. Straighten you out. Set up shop. And as the preachers out of, in Miami asking to please come, and we want to work along with you. Well, I'm hearing from hundreds of preachers, and I'm not excited, nor am I surprised, because God told his apostles, I make you fishers of men. And not at no time did he say you're going to catch one type of fish. Anyone that fish naturally, I haven't been fishing naturally since I was about seven, eight, or nine years old. And when I fished in Raleigh, North Carolina, then I didn't have no modern fishing rod. I had the old country fishing rod, a long bamboo stick with a line on it and a hook and looked like a makeshift cork. But it worked. When I put that long bamboo pole down in water, I can see the fish coming, feel something tugging and pull it up. They came up. I didn't have that modern type of pole that, you know, would make that noise when the fish get it now. I had a stick, cord, hook, cork. But it got the job done. 
In other words, we're not modernizing the truth of God. We're keeping it God's way. That way is guaranteed to get the job done. So I want to encourage all of you preachers out there, you that call yourself preachers, to uh, you can tell you the right, the truth of God, and leave your church. Hmm. Who, Pastor Jennings? You. <laughs> leave your church. Leave your organization. Don't get caught up in your position because it's worthless. Out of all the titles you have, you're either a brother or an enemy. And before going further, I want to greet all the saints in the Bahamas. Uh, God willing, we will be in Nassau, Bahamas next month. By the time this is aired, of course, we'll be back here in the States. But uh, Freeport, Bahamas is where the convention originally was going to start. And from Freeport, we were going to Nassau. But God went down in Freeport, and he had a good time. Hmm. And God had a good time. He destroyed everything. Yeah. And I've been telling men and women moreover, don't get caught up in nothing in this life. Everything you have is not yours. Notice the language of what I said. Everything you have, hmm. it's not yours. In other words, your house, your little car, your little cheap bank account, your clothing, your hat, you're borrowing it. Won't be for long, God will snatch the breath out of your wicked body, and it will drop wherever it is. But while you have life now, you better make your calling and election sure. So God went through Freeport, not Mother Nature. God. Someone said, Pastor Jenna, nature don't have no mother. There is no mother nature. In the book of Nahum, God says he have his way in the whirlwind. Mother nature is a phrase that man have made. God don't have no mother. God is the master of all creation. Talk to Job out of the whirlwind. I wouldn't, I, someone said, would you want to experience that? No. A whirlwind is like a twister, a tornado. You imagine seeing a tornado from earth going up into heaven and all that lightning and wind blowing and hell is falling and, and that's horrible enough. And then a voice going to talk out of it? No, I'm running. <laughs> Yeah, I'm running. I, only way I stay there, he got to put me in the spirit yeah. and then hold me. Yeah. Don't just put me in the spirit. Hold me. Yeah. Drop me in a trance. <laughs> Otherwise, in that, brother, I'm getting away from there. <laughs> but can you imagine the fear that struck Job? God talked to him out of a whirlwind. Where were you? When I laid the foundation of the world, I hung the earth on nothing and spread the north over an empty place. A whirlwind is too much. But you're going to start talking? <laughs> Only God can hold you there long enough just to listen. That's right. So we are grateful. All right. Let's dive into the book of pain. Amen. See what's in there for us. I want to remind our viewers, our international headquarters temple is 5105 North 5th Street in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, here in the wicked country of America, where Satan is the president. <laughs> Amen. Demon Trump is the president here. Amen. He, he, he only have a while. Whether you're wicked or righteous, if you're in the White House, you can't get in there unless it's God's will. Even the wicked have a role to play in the earth. All right, Williams, I want to talk about the love of money. Mm -hmm. And I also want to charge them that are rich. That's right. 
And I also want to tell the people not the glory in the wealth, but who the glory in. Why, this is going to be an Old and New Testament journey. Amen. I want to bring people back to the most valuable thing in the world, and God is he. That's right. Eh? That's right. Amen. Why? Because this wicked human family, you're so colonel, and you love money too love much. Money. Love money. Have you ever met people who were humble? Humble and faithful? Mm -hmm. Until they start making an X amount of money, they were able to change the location of living residence. Mm -hmm. Then they changed the status of the car. Ain't nothing wrong with changing those things. Right. The problem is you shouldn't change with it. That's right. Are you getting me? That's right. I'm worse now than I was in the basement. Oh, yeah. Hey, man, the basement, well, we helped a good-sized little group. And I'm so glad that God didn't do me the way many of these preachers do. They go from a small storefront, and then when they get a large church, they throw the Bible out the window. Right. God have given us churches upon churches upon buildings yeah. and have made me more stricter, yeah. more tougher, yeah. because I don't want to increase and get weaker. Right. No, if we're going to increase, I want to be more humble and stronger That's right. so you don't get caught up and the worthlessness of materialism. That's right. All right, follow me in your Bible. First in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 6. Follow me. 1 Timothy. And judge yourself according, you that are watching and you that are here. Listen. 1 Timothy chapter 6, we're starting in verse 7. And? For we brought nothing into this world. Why can't I get this over to people? Hmm. You came here streaking. That's right. Buck naked. Yeah. Huh? Every, ain't nobody was born with a suit on. Nobody was born with a, a man with chains in your hips. Hmm. You wasn't born with a carnation on your chest. You wasn't born with a hat on. Right. It ain't no woman birthed a little girl and she came out with a pocketbook. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? <laughs> Everybody was born naked. Naked. Ignorant. Dumb. Yeah, man. You didn't know you was born dumb? Sure you were. Oh, yeah. You didn't know who you were. You didn't know who God was. Hmm. You was dumb and hmm. helpless. That's right. Need to be waited on. That's right. Didn't know how to use the bathroom. That's how dumb you were. Hey, man, you just waste on yourself. Yearned on yourself. It didn't matter to you if somebody was playing with you. <laughs> <laughs> eh? You were the child, somebody playing with you, you didn't say, excuse me. <laughs> hey Amen. You just unloaded upon them. <laughs> and you didn't even say you were sorry. That's true. Hey Amen. That's right. Had to be given a name. And even after you were given a name, you had to grow into the name and Coming to the knowledge of the name you had. That's right. You were uncertain. No knowledge of who your father was. No. And sometimes uncertain about who was your mother. Someone say, how's that, Pastor Jennings? Because sometimes the mother may have been absent working. Yeah. And someone had to keep the child. Yeah. And when the child first get here, and sometimes... When a mother come home, when a mother can be absent so much, and they'll now the child get used to the arms and the feeling of the other woman. Then when mommy come home, the child have to readjust. So sometimes they start crying because the arms of the mother now strange. Yeah. So now the child have to go back repeatedly in the arms and they get used to the mother. That's right. Viewers. God is our heavenly father, provider, healer, keeper, teacher, creator, giver of life. A mother and father can only do for their children what God permits them to do. 
Father work is because God bless him with a job. Mother work is because God bless her with a job. So the mother and father that fear the Lord should instill in their children the righteous, holy values of God. That's right. That's first. Someone said, well, I want to teach my children what my father and mother taught me. That depends on what your mother and father taught you. Because if your mother and father gave you wrong information, then I wouldn't advise you to pass that slop down to your children. You know, some things that's hammy down is good. Yeah. And then there's some thing that's hammy down is no good. no good. And anything that's no good, you shouldn't want your family to have it. That's right. Because there's none good but one, and that one is God. So the best that you should always want for your family, first and foremost, before you want a certain style of living, the first thing you should want is God. That's right. Are you getting me? That's right. I, I, it's imperative that I preach this. Yeah. It's necessary that I preach this because the devil is damning people by the thousands oh, yeah. through the prosperity message. That's right. As I said last night, people have been writing me like someone dropping bombs. Hmm. One in my perspective on Benny Hinn's repentance. Mm -hmm. And as I say before, say sad now again, I can't criticize no man when he repents. If that man repents, fine. Mm -hmm. But my thing is, is that repentance acceptable to God? That's it. Let us just consider Benny Hinn well, he can afford to stop preaching prosperity. Notice my language. He can afford it. Yeah. Ain't nothing broke about the hen. The hen been plucking your wallets for over 40 years or more. That's right. Benny got plenty. Through the years, accumulated millions, millions, millions of dollars. So now, let us remember, he said he was called and sent by God. And through the years on television, he would tell the people, the Lord spoke to him and told him for you to give this amount. He said the prosperity message came to him from God. Lord. Well, why are you saying this, Pastor Jennings? This is what makes me not question his repentance. You can repent all you want. Fine. The question is, is that repentance acceptable to God? That's right. Why you say that, Pastor Jennings? Because God says if you blaspheme Blasphemy. against the Holy Ghost, That's and right. the Holy Ghost is God, That's right. you cannot be forgiven in this life nor the life to come. That's it. Now, That's right. Benny Hinn said that the prosperity message, message came from God. Yeah. Lie against the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Benny Hinn said so many times that I can't count. The Lord said to him to tell the audience, if you give this amount, God will do this. He would tell you, this is from God. Yeah. Every time he said it, it was a lie. This is from God. Lie. This is from God. Lie. This is from God. So his blaspheme was repetitious. That's right. Someone says, suppose you've done it ignorantly. A man that robbed is not a dumb thief. There's not a prosperity liar out here that don't know that message did not come from God. Amen. Amen. Jesus didn't preach it. Prophets didn't preach it. No. None of the apostles preached it. Amen. We've been preaching for years that the greatest wealth is not money. Mm -hmm. It's not a house. Mm -hmm. It's not a car. That's right. I can Listen, if someone gave me a Bentley today, I can drive that Bentley like I'm driving a Volkswagen. Amen. I can step in it, Gino, and come out, Gino. Yeah. I won't step in it. 
Gino and come out Sir Jennings. Before I get in, if I'm, if I'm going to ask, you got any mustard? And then when I come out, I'm not going to shake and say, where's the grandpapa? <laughs> what you own should not change you. When what you own change you to become arrogant, self-righteous, self-centered, that is proof you cannot handle what you have. That's right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Brothers and sisters that have been in the truth of God for years never saw us get uplifted how things have grown from a small group to thousands. That's right. We have been the same. That's right. Why? This is not Geno Jennings' work. That's right. This is the Lord's work. So how can I get high-minded over something that's not mine? That's right. Listen at this. For we brought Give chapter and verse again. 1 Timothy chapter 6, and we're at verse 7. We brought nothing. Into this world. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing yeah. into this world. And it is certain. It is certain. We can carry nothing out. It is certain. So if the hen <laughs> truly repent and is sorry for lying all those years, yeah. and from stealing from the people, but let's call it for what it is, then let me say to you what Jesus said. Yeah. Sell all you have and give it to the poor. Now when Jesus heard these things, if you stole and you truly repent for what you stole and you still possess that stolen merchandise, Give it up. Right. Give it back right. to all those you stole it from. Right. Am I right, I said? Right. You viewers were suckered into buying him jets. You viewers were suckered into buying him yachts. You viewers were suckered into buying him mansions. And he put the name of Jesus Christ upon all what he possessed and said it was God's will, right. which is blatant blasphemy. Blasphemy. Okay. Amen. So the question is, did God accept it? Yeah. The social media is buzzing everywhere. Is his repentance real or fake? Who cares? I want to know, is God accepting it? Accepting. And for me to know, I got to take it to the book. That's right. So being that you done stole all this from poor, hard working people, and they made you rich, Amen. sell it and give them all back theirs. That's right. Sell all. If I stole Shade's car, and then I repent for stealing Shade's car. I have no business still driving around in Shade's car. That's right. For if I repent, I have to give Shade back what's his. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. Oh, I know this message is going to put fire on the thousands of folk. Listen at this. For we brought nothing into this world. We brought nothing here. And it is certain we can carry you nothing can't out. can't take nothing out. And, and having food and raiment, let us be there with content. Having food and raiment, therewith let us be content. content. Let us be thankful. Yeah. Nothing wrong with striving to work, but it is a sin not to be rich. Listen at what I'm telling you. It's not a sin to be rich because the Lord can make you rich. The Lord made Solomon rich. But it is a sin to strive to be rich. That's right. For the scripture speaking, it speaks against striving to be rich. Why? Why do God don't want us to strive to be rich? Because that will become our center focus. Yeah. If I got to lay out a church deliberately miss church when I can be there. Mm -hmm.
because I want to keep up with that group of people and that group of people, and I want people to look at me as something more than what I think I am. That's right. Labor not to be rich. Do you hear? In the book of Proverbs, chapter 23 and at verse if 4. If anyone working just to be rich, you violate God's law. Yes. That's right. Why do God don't want you to work to be rich? To be because rich. God knows that riches will hold your attention. That's right. You're a miss church yeah. to make that dollar. Oh, yeah. You are, you are, you are, just stay out. Stay out. Because then the dollar becomes the prime Priority, That's And right. if you love that money too much, you will start breaking laws and you will start That's going right. behind the scenes, breaking God's law and moral law. That's right. That's right. Just to make that money. Right. And then after you make that money, when you stand before God, it'll be a witness against you in judgment. That's right. Nobody going to get away. Nobody. Nobody. Glory to God. Listen at this. In Proverbs chapter 23 and at verse 4. Yes. Labor not to be rich. Well, that alone crushed the prosperity message. Yeah. We're supposed to labor for souls. That's right. Not labor just to get rich. That's right. For our focus should be God and the salvation of self. Amen. Our focus should never be wealth. If God bless you with a Bentley, fine. If God bless you with a rose, fine. If God bless you with a house, and this auditorium is the size of your bathroom. And this stage is the size of your tub. Lord. That's fine. That's you. Float around. <laughs> but if anything you have, even down to your husband or wife, if they change you in any way, that caused you to question the reality of God and now your commitment and your loyalty to God is no more at its height, but now it starts to drop, drop, drop. And when it drop, you drop. That's right. Because the mind you had started to be replaced by Colonel Folly. That's right. The objective of the church and the first priority of the church is to be saved. Yeah. To the degree that if you don't have it, yeah. you still want to be saved. That's right. That's right. Do you get what I'm telling you? Labor not to be rich. Labor not to be rich. Cease from thine own wisdom. Cease from your own carnal way of thinking. Wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? Uh -huh. For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away. As an eagle toward heaven. Why? Because many people, when they get rich, they lose control. That's right. And sometimes you can tell when a person is not used to money because they change. Oh, yeah. No brother should stop acting like a real brother because you got a little confetti. Amen. Sister won't speak to you now because... You in a bigger house, you fool. That's right. Bigger house, more space to die in. <laughs> That's right. Go ahead. I'm so glad God made me like this. And not only that, I was raised with this type of teaching from home. Amen. My mother and father, by God's permission, laid a good foundation. And my father instilled in us work. Yeah. Because even scripturally, laziness is a sin. That's right. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. It's like children. Having a car is a, just a privilege. It isn't something that your mother and father got to give you. Like cable and satellite. <laughs> That's right. Those are just privileges. That's right. That's right. If you can't pay that bill, some folks say, well, I can't live without it. You didn't <laughs> always have it. Amen. When I came up, we didn't have it. Amen. It wasn't around. <laughs> we had rabbit ears. Right. The rabbit ears antenna. That's right. And when the antenna wouldn't work, you get some aluminum foil. Yes. 
And if that didn't work, you made an antenna out of that wire hanger. Yeah. And when that, you, you move the wire hanger, you put that in sync with the foil, bam, you got a picture. That's right. Everybody cannot handle much. And this is why God don't give everybody much. No. Because some can handle it and be humble. Yeah. And then some get it and it makes them mean. That's right. Arrogant. That's right. Spiteful. Yeah. Self-righteous. Yeah. Conceited. Yeah. Amen. They want you to notice what they have. They that trust in their wealth. My, 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 my. In the book of Psalms 49 and at verse 6. Listen. They that trust in their wealth. They that trust in their wealth. And boast themselves. Boast themselves. In the multitude of their riches. In the multitude of what they have. None of them can by any means redeem his brother. That's right. You can't redeem your brother. Nor give to God a, a ransom for him. Listen. If your brother died, you can't get him back with it. That's right. Right. I know millionaires personally, and the reason why I had the chance to know them because millionaires watch the telecast. Mm -hmm. Many come to the church. Uh, WBC boxers and NBA players and all of that stuff mm -hmm. come to the church and visit. I meet them in the airport. I even met some wrestlers from WWE. I'm in the airport waiting to catch a plane, and people are walking up to this one fella, asked for his autograph and whatnot, and you pay him no mind to me. You just don't want to jump on the mat. He knew who I was. Wonderful. He said, we watch you in the locker room. Wow. <laughs> Seen him watch you on YouTube in the locker room. Wonderful. I knew he was telling the truth. He said, I love it when you do that. Mm. Mm -hmm. I want to give you a smackdown with Bible. <laughs> Amen. The world is distracted by materialism. Their inward thought is. Listen. Now in Psalms 49 and at verse 11. Their inward thinking. That their houses shall continue forever. They think that this stuff is going to stay here. That's right. So preachers have this cheap teaching from Satan. Right here is heaven. Yeah. If you want a slice of heaven, you can get it here. This ain't no, listen, if this is heaven, I don't want it. Don't want it. But if this was hell, <laughs> I'd take it. Oh, yeah. What do you mean, Pastor Jennings? If my eternal punishment for being wrong would just stay here on earth, you know, get behind in bills once in a while, yeah. pay taxes, yeah. I'm cool with it. Cool with it. But if this is eternal life with God right here, this is miserable. That's right. You get what I'm telling you. That's right. To all of my viewers that are watching, many of you are at odds with your brothers, your sisters, your uncles, and aunts. People that you used to be close with. Y'all never was at odds until your daddy died. That's right. Or your mother died. Or your uncle died. No money should come between the love of a family. That's right. That's right. Some of them stopped speaking. Mother died, father died, grandpa died, and didn't even leave much money. Didn't even leave much land. Maybe a lot. A lot with a mule and the mule back sunk in. And they're arguing over a lot in money, yeah. cuss each other out. Yeah. Don't speak for years. Yeah. Which shows that your love for materialism is greater than your love for life. That's right. That's right. People have left things to me and my wife and my family before they died. And I would ask them, do you have children? They'd be like, yeah, Pastor Jens, I got children, but I don't want to leave it to them because I'm scared they're going to smoke it up or drink it up. Mm. Oh, so, so I don't waste my life being at having the children at odds with me. 
I deliberately just gave it to them. Someone said, you should have kept it. Well, perhaps, but I will not have my name blackened over materialism. That's right. You mean to tell me you not my brother no more because you got a little bit confetti? You mean to tell me you can't speak to me no more because now you're able to afford a certain brand of suit that you used to couldn't wear? That's right. Talk to me. That's right. That's right. Don't forget how you got where you yes, are. Amen. Be careful how you treat people yeah. as you elevate in life because you didn't get where you are on your own. That's right. There's somebody, righteous or unrighteous, aid you in your journey of accomplishment. Oh, yeah. The reason why you better be careful how you treat them, because God may resurrect a situation in your life. Now you're going to need them once God plucked you off the mountain you on. That's right. Glory to God. Now in the book of Proverbs, chapter 19, and at verse 4. Everybody all right? Oh, yeah. Mm. Listen good. Proverbs 19, and at verse 4. What is it? Wealth maketh many friends. Doesn't it? It never said wealth make real friends. Many friends. Sometimes wealth makes make you have relatives. That's right. <laughs> you have relatives you didn't even know you had. This is why I often tell people, regardless how God bless you, don't advertise it. That's right. It isn't wise to tell everything that God do for you. If, if I'm injured and I got a big suit, if I got a $50 million suit, I said, if, I'm making it a parable. <laughs> and I right. want to make it so plain because I know folk get on in there, Pastor Jenny got a $50 million <laughs> suit. No, I don't. No, you don't. I'm making a parable. <laughs> That's right. And Jenny spake on this wise, <laughs> That's right. I'm making a parable. That's right. If I had a million dollar lawsuit, I'm not going to get up and advertise it. No. I will still be Pastor Jennings, my mm -hmm. wife will still be Sister Jennings. That's right. And my children will still be Jennings' children. That's right. And I ain't going to treat them no special way. No. Because I refuse to, you know, all children are not the same. Some you can do something for and they can handle it. Yeah. And some you can't do nothing for because they can't handle it yet. That don't mean you love one more than the other, but you got to use good judgment because what you do for one, if the other can't handle, if you do it, you can destroy them. That's right. That's right. I even use judgment when I send ministers over what congregation? That's right. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. There's Good. some brothers I can put them in a building packed. Amen. And I don't have to go back and see Mussolini in the pulpit. That's right. That's right. And there's some brothers I have to keep them before one or two or three. Yeah. Because if you can't love that one, two, or three, you will make a mess and butcher one or two or three hundred. That's right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? That's right. So there are those that can drive an expensive car, but to them it's just a car. Yeah. It don't mean nothing to them. Mean nothing. But then there are those who want to be seen. You know, drive a car and get an itch up on you and look over and see as you're looking at them. <laughs> and here you ain't paying them no mind. Do you get what I'm telling you? That's right. This is good. Listen. Wealth maketh many friends. What? Wealth maketh many friends. A lot of people love you just to get what they can out of you. And then once they get all that they want out of you, they treat trash better than they treat you. That's true. 
Failing to realize it is the Lord that can put your life in such a frenzy. Now you got to reach out to the very one you reject. That's right. Listen. A false witness shall not be unpunished. A false witness won't be unpunished. And he that speaketh lies he shall that not speak escape. Lies won't get away. Many will entreat the favor of the prince. Many will entreat the favor of the prince. And every man is a friend to him that giveth gifts. Do you hear that? Amen. You take a person that's giving, some seek to take advantage of a person that's giving. That's right. There are those who's really in need. I mean, really need. And then there are those who's not in need. They're just users. Users. Right. Charge them that are rich. Listen at this. Now in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 6 and at verse 17. We want to build on the prosperity trash. Amen. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen that are watching, true prosperity is not the trash that Hen been teaching, T.D. Snake's been teaching, Creffler O' Quarter <laughs> or Joel Allstein. Amen. None of them. Amen. True prosperity yeah. is the wisdom and knowledge Amen. and understanding of who God is. That's right. Are you wealthy, Pastor Jennings? Yes. Oh, yes. Where's your wealth? William is holding it. That's right. The word of God is our wealth. That's right. For the Bible says we have this treasure in earthly vessels, in vessels. That the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. That's right. This in. Chuck in 1 Timothy 6 and verse 17. Listen at this. This message right here, mm -hmm. this scripture right here, is talking to a certain class of people. That's right. It ain't talking to poor folk. No. It's talking to rich folk right here. That's right. Give chapter and verse again. First Timothy chapter 6 and we're at verse 17. All right. Charge them. Charge them. That are rich in I'm this world. I'm warning you. Yes. I'm them. warning you. That's right. Charge them that are rich where? In this world. What? That they be not high-minded. I told you that's how a lot of them get. Yeah. Got a mink, got a fox. Wearing a fox and a mink and it's 80 degrees. That's right. They just want somebody to know they have it. Yeah. I remember some years ago, I was in the Newport News Temple, and I had a BMW. It was good and used. Someone had it before I did. <laughs> and I was on my way to the hotel. On my way to the hotel, but I only got maybe like five minutes from the church. And there was a fella pulled up in the BMW, flagging back, and I didn't know who he was. I thought maybe he was one of the brothers of the church. And so I pulled over and got out my car. I wanted to know, like, who are you? He said, oh, Pastor Jenny, I'm a television viewer. I just saw you when you drove off. I said, all right, I was ready to get back in the car. He said, I take a picture with you? Well, I'm used to people taking pictures with me. Yeah. But then when he got the picture and stood there and took the picture, he did it in the video. Then he was just talking. Here's Pastor Jenny, me and Pastor Jenny standing here. Wow. I got a BMW. He got a one. The moment I heard that, I walked away. How materialistic if you drive a Beamer, a Jag, a Ferrari, a Caddy, a Mule, a Donkey, <laughs> if you're on the back of a snail. Yeah. Right. Bentley, Rose, Maybach, it don't matter. Right. You want to drive that if you can afford it? Fine. That's right. But if that drives you, until besides being in church, you want to sit at an exclusive restaurant so everybody can see your grill. Lord. You want a showboat. That's right. Then you are cheap. That's Not right. only in spirit, but you are cheap as a man and as a woman. That's right. For the greatest prize is the wisdom of God. Yeah. Are you listening? Charge them that are rich in this world. Wait a minute. Do you hear all this Bible? Charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded. Wait a minute. Why do God put that there? Because God himself know the mentality of rich people. Right. It's hard to find a rich person willing to repent. Amen. 
Poor folk do it. Folks struggling with bills and get behind them bills. Repent, yeah, that's for me. That's right. Huh? And be baptized. Yeah. Once in a while, you may have some rich folks out there who striving to do God's will, but it's so rare. Until the book says it's more easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. needle. Look, when I was young, I used to take that thread, put it through that eye quick. Hmm. Now, man, I find myself like my father, tongue hanging out. <laughs> I hit everything but the needle. Yeah. You know, and my wife, I remember when she, she would take it, give me that, you can't have sick. Mm -hmm. Now when she take it, she be. <laughs> And I say, uh-huh. <laughs> you understand? Oh, yeah. So if it's difficult at times to put thread, <laughs> caught you unaware, didn't it? <laughs> if it's difficult at times to put thread, you know a camel ain't going through the eye of a needle. Need. So look at it. He says it's more easier. Easier for Easier. Him. How hardly. Listen at this. Now in the book of St. Luke, chapter 18, and at verse 24. How Hardly. And, and when Jesus saw that he was very sorrowful, yes. he said, how hardly, how hardly shall they that have riches, shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? What? How hardly shall they Do that have riches. Do you hear this, rich folk? Amen. Hardly. Now, I can show you people in the Bible who was rich serving God. Yeah. Abraham was one. Yeah. Job was one. Jacob was one. But they had a main ingredient that rich folk don't have. Fearing God. That's right. They feared the Lord. That's right. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Yeah. Abraham them wasn't out in clubs. That's right. Bumping and grinding. Yeah. You today, you rich, wealthy, and then you do the stupidest things. That's true. Look how much money these ball players make. And still living there, acting like fools who ain't got a dime. Get locked up for doing the dumbest thing. You're wealthy and you're still fighting men over some woman. That's right. That's true. Am I right, I say? That's right. Multi-millionaires and you fighting in the street over some woman. And the woman you fighting over, she done winked her eye at several men. That's right. You're so hellish. Yeah. Listen at the Bible. How hardly shall they that have riches. How hardly shall they that have riches. Enter into the kingdom of God. Do you see this? A rich man, it's hard for him to get in God's kingdom. Yeah. Right. Because most cases, if God don't fully possess mind, soul, body, and spirit of the rich man or of the rich woman, then the money will become a God. The money will become a idol. It's no way that I'm going to buy furniture I can't sit in. It's no way we're going to have plates, cups, or china, or silverware that I can't use to eat and I can't sit down in. Amen. Oh, don't sit there. King Louis sat there. If Louis Rump can sit there, I can sit there. That's right. That's right. Saving glasses for guests. <laughs> and guests you may not have. That's right. <laughs> the glasses sit there and turn colors. Yeah. Saving silverware for guests. Yeah. And the silverware don't turn brown. Amen. Saving clothes. For a particular, particular what? When I got married, I wasn't going to buy no tux. I remember my brother asked me, Nick, ain't you going to rent a tux? I'm like, rent a tux? <laughs> I said, you see all these suits I got? <laughs> no, I ain't renting no tux. Something I'm going to have on for 20 minutes. Yeah. I went and put, got my suit clean that I preached in a few weeks before that. Got me some white material. Went down there, sold it, made me a bow tie, clipped it on, and preached that night after I said, I do. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> preached that night. That's right. Stop living a life with the mission to impress. Yeah. 
The only one that you should try to be close to more than anything and anybody is your Lord. That's right. Because iniquity has separated us between us and God. And God. Listen. For it is easier for a camel to go through a needle's eye. Man, no one can put it together like Jesus. Yeah. No one. Nobody. You know, I mean, you close one eye and think that's better than the other one. That mm. can't get the thread in. You close that one. That can't get it in. You just keep hitting air. <laughs> so then the Lord makes it more hard. hard. It is easier for a camel, for a camel to go, through a, to needle's go eye through a needle's eye than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Some people pray and ask God to make them rich. God won't answer that prayer for everybody. everybody. Now, mm-hmm. Benny Hinn and others like him have lied through the years mm-hmm. and said it is not the will of God for God's people to be poor. Mm-hmm. They have said that repeatedly again. You have blasphemed against the Bible because Jesus said the, the poor, poor. Listen. In the book of St. John. Listen. St. John chapter 12 and at verse 8. Says what? For the poor for always. For the poor always. Ye have with you. No, the poor sinner. For the poor or the poor. He just said the poor. The he poor. didn't say whether they sinner or saint. The poor. You got poor holy people and poor sinners. That's right. Poor. Viewers, wealth is not a measuring stick of life. Some wealthy folk are some of the most arrogant, mean, self-righteous, self-centered that I've seen. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. And then there are some folk that have, you wouldn't even know they have it. Mm-hmm. They're humble. They are not selfish. Yeah. Do you get what I'm telling you? That's right. Listen. Back in 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 17. Charge them that are rich in this world. Charge them. Charge them. So the Holy Ghost brought this to the apostle, Mm -hmm. and the apostle Paul is now bringing it to his son in the gospel, Timothy. That's right. Charge them. Charge them that are rich. This is a message direct to wealthy, rich folk. Amen. Mm -hmm. Charge them that are rich in this world. What should we charge them about? That they be not high-minded. Do you see this? Mm -hmm. Don't get arrogant. High-minded. Don't get high-minded. That's right. That's right. We that are strive to be holy people, if we buy a car, we don't try to bling it. (laughs) That's right. That's right. I get a car, it's going to have the rims that it came with. (laughs) It ain't going to be sitting high up like a Mack truck. Sitting high. And it's a car? That's right. I buy my wife a car. What she look like going somewhere and coming around the corner with eyelashes on the uh, on the light? <laughs> this right. foolishness! You in the church striving to serve God, brother? You have no business with men's uh, testicle-looking things hanging from the back of your truck. No way. No. You in the church, you have no business with dice hanging from the mirror of your car. That's right. That's right. Old things are passed away because you are a new creature. That's right. Wonderful. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Amen. We have hundreds of CDL drivers, <laughs> brothers that got pickups. What do you like coming down my house with rubber dice hanging from the back of your truck? (laughs) I don't mean dice that you roll to shoot crap with either. Right. Something that looks like the the man, the male anatomy. Right. It's amazing how even women bought it, put it on their cars. How trampish. Go ahead, man. Go ahead. Go ahead. We're in a church. We don't have dice hanging from our mirror. (laughs) Eyelashes on our car uh, lights. Hey, like we don't do that. No. We don't put stickers on our cars and trucks of the of the shape of a naked woman. That's right. That's right. Am I right? I said. Charge. 
Amen. Everything about us still fall under the category, put a difference between holy and unholy. Yeah, that's right. Clean and unclean. That's right. If you was in the center, you sat in different areas. If you did it, set scoping out girls. Man, you in a church, you ain't got to be sitting out there on schoolyards and parks looking like you some crazed buzzard. That's right. That's right. That's perverseness. That's, that's perverted. That is perverted. Hmm. I want to soak you a little. Amen. You can hate me by this evening. Amen. Do you hear this? Charge them that are rich in the world. Charge them. Charge them. You see, a lot of rich folk think they're, they're entitled yeah. because a lot of the mentality is superior in the way they think, and we're less than. Right. So they think they got rights to say certain things to you and treat you a certain way because they're already looking down on you as being not good enough That's right. as a human being. That's right. The, the, the rich. The, the, the rich. In the book... That's right, brothers. jab him, Williams, jab him. <laughs> the, the, the rich. Give chapter and verse. Proverbs uh. chapter 22 <laughs> and verse 2. That lets you know he wanted to get that <laughs> out <laughs> bad. <laughs> All right. Proverbs 22 and at verse 2. What it says. The rich. The rich. And poor. And poor. Meet together. Meet together. The, the Lord. But the Lord. Is the maker of them all. You meet together. That's right. Listen, you rich folk who despise the poor, you're going to be laying in the grave Amen. and you both going to stand before God. That's right. So when I say I wish I was a wealthy man it's because the work of the Lord is so demanding on me. That's right. It grieves me to go to a place, rent a hotel room, and we got it everywhere we go in America and out, we have an instant congregation. Instant. Instant. Go to a place, hundred and something get baptized. Man, most men won't baptize 50 people in 80 years. True. I would love to be able to have the ability to buy a church on the spot. Yeah. Have contractors in there on the spot. Same day or next day. That's right. And then dedicate it a few weeks later. That's right. That's right. God gave me a dedication. That's and wonderful. yet I'm tired of traveling, mm. but there's a press that is hard for me to describe Amen. that the Lord himself put in us Amen. to keep going from state to state, town to town, village to village, country to country. In a few more months, we'll be in Australia. Yeah. Who we'll go all the way to Australia to preach? <laughs> and you ain't getting paid? That's right. It's hot there. Next year, we'll be in Alaska. Yeah. We'll be in Alaska next year. Amen. Next year, we'll be in Dubai, mm. near Saudi Arabia. Wonderful. Starting to work in Dubai. We'll be in Africa, Johannesburg in a few months. Mm. We're not going down there for fun. Oh, no. Benny Hinn and Jake's and all Steve would never got rich if they stood for what God stood for. That's right. Go ahead, man. Go ahead. True wealth Go ahead. is the truth of God. That's right. There's nothing more valuable, more precious. A diamond don't carry the quality of God's wisdom. No, no. Are you listening? That's right. The church must prioritize, yeah. or should I say the church must reprioritize yeah. because the messages in the churches, the so-called apostolics and the Pentecostals and the non-denominationals, their message have changed and is getting more and more and more like the world. Oh, yeah. Listen. Back in 1 Timothy 6 and verse 17. All right. Charge them that are rich in this world. Charge them that are rich right here. That they be not high-minded. That you don't be high-minded, self-righteous, arrogant beside yourself. Nor trust. Wait a minute. Nor trust. In uncertain riches. Don't trust in what you have. That's right. If you became rich, started a business, money started to come in, don't trust it. Don't trust it. 
Well, what is it about it, Pastor Jennings, that I shouldn't trust? Don't trust what it can do to you. Oh, yeah. Amen. That's right. That's right. You see how you can serve God with it. Don't be stingy. Don't be selfish. That's right. And this is why God won't make everybody wealthy. You got some people stingy and they ain't wealthy. You can That's imagine right. the way they are if they got wealthy. Amen. There are some people, before they made a little bit of money, some of you may have helped them. They needed money. You gave it to them. They needed something else. You lent it to them. You even helped them with furniture in the house. Then all of a sudden, they get a little bit of money. Hmm. You would think you never done nothing. That's true. They don't come and thank you. I often think of the uh, sister that my mother and father took in. And the sister's own mother couldn't control her. Hmm. And my mother and father took her in because they always took in folk. It was eight of us. But it ended up being like 9, 10, 11, or 12. But when I was little then, back in the 70s, and the sister repented, got baptized, even received the Holy Ghost. I mean, had the Holy Ghost. So my mother and father, of what? It was the sister's mother that reached out to my mother and asked my mother, would you please take my daughter? Because I can't do nothing with her. So after raising her, and she landing good jobs and all this other stuff, not once did she come back to Philadelphia and thank my mother. Wow. Even to this day, she'll come visit Philadelphia and will not stop to see my own mother. My Lord. Please don't forget what little things because without that little thing, you still would not have made it. That's true. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. How do we get so devilish arrogant? This is why God strips people. Right. He done it to Nebuchadnezzar. Yes. Yeah. Nebuchadnezzar was a king who was on God's side. Babylon started to prosper. Then Nebuchadnezzar's mindset changed. Change. And what he used to say about God, he started saying about himself. Is this not great Babylon that I have built? Mm -hmm. Out of all the years we've been pastoring, 35 years. And we're, we're celebrating 35 years this whole year. That's right. But not once have I ever said, this is my church. That's right. Not once. Here we started out with about 12 to 15 people in the basement. Now we have thousands. Yeah. And not once, not once have I ever said, this is my church. Because right. it's a lie. That's right. can't personalize what God declared to be his. Amen. Jesus said upon this rock I'd build my church. My church. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He said I'd build it. That's right. So I can't take credit for what's his. Amen. I'm just a laborer. Is that Bible? Paul said we are laborers together with God, I am just a hired laborer That's right. on the job site. That's right. And I have the blueprints to the church. Yeah, go ahead. I'm like a foreman yes, sir. making sure the church go upright. That's right. And if there's any form of detour from the blueprints, we got to put everything back in order. That's right. What God have done for First Church of our Lord Jesus Christ in this short time, 
Most men have never reached that pinnacle of success in their lifetime. It's true. And it's just still exploding. Yeah. Oh, yeah. From state to state, country to country, and it's just beginning. It's just beginning. Paul said, you keep saying that. I keep saying that because what of God has shown me years before I met you. Yeah. Is still in the embryonic stage. Wonderful, man. Eyes have not seen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ears have not heard. Hallelujah. The good thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. We stay humble before our God. Hallelujah. We don't credit ourselves for what God do. That's why we always pointing the people to God. That's right. That's right. That's why our first statement is we bear witness. That's right. There is no God Hallelujah. but one. Hallelujah. Are you listening? Wonderful. We don't let people testify, and the first thing they say, I give on to Pastor Jennings. No! Oh. God first. That's right. And I'm not next. That's right. The prophets is next. That's right. Then the apostles is next. Oh. Because they had it before we got here. Hallelujah. We cannot forget what them brothers went through. We are just privileged to be a partaker of the benefits. That's right. It's privileged just to hold the scrolls and to read of the life and how God stood behind them. Hallelujah. And how they stood bold Hallelujah. and refused to surrender. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're supposed to have that same spirit. spirit. So we are not distracted by wealth and popularity. Mm. God rules in the truth of God. That's right. God rules here. Come on, take Hallelujah. 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 God, I said. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Hallelujah. Glory. Come on, take Hallelujah, Tito. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. God rules. Hallelujah. Wonderful. Are Wonderful. you listening? Hallelujah. If I would have got exalted, yeah. none of this would have materialized. No. Because my self-exaltation would have hindered the success of what, listen, if when you get exalted, and high-minded, you stand in your own way. Do you get what I'm telling you? That's right. When you get exalted and high-minded, you hinder your own self. That's right. That's why the Lord says, if my people, which are called by my name, humble themselves. Humble themselves. Humble themselves. Humble themselves. And seek my face. That's it. See, God wants you to humble himself, yourself and pray right. and seek his face. That's it. But you got to humble yourself. Oh, yes. All right, listen. Hallelujah. This is good. Charge them that are rich in this world. Charge them mm. that are rich right here. That there they are be... many of you wealthy people watch this program, a whole lot of you. Mm. And God wanted, I ain't saying... God is trying to get your attention. To put that attached to God is an insult. God don't try to do nothing. That's right. God gets it. That's it. That's right. He'll make that rich man whose glory in his mansion have a car crash. Yeah. And now you can't enjoy your wealth. That's right. He'll make your house burn to the ground. Yeah. Now you can't brag about your mansion. Yeah. He'll let your Bentley flip over and let you barely make it out alive. God is getting your attention. That's right. But you are blinded by your dollars. That's right. So when you recover, now you go visit Jake's yeah. or visit Benny Hill. 
and say, oh, I'm going to be a Christian now. Those men don't represent Christ. No. Being successful in God is not based upon the kind of car or house or suit of clothing or bank account you have. No. That's not success in God. Success. True success in God, I can say like Paul, that I may know him. Right. And the power his of his resurrection. You have money, I have wisdom. You have money, I have knowledge. That's right. You have money, I have understanding. That's right. You have money, I have seen the Father. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Out of all your money, do you have what it takes to make the resurrection? That's it. Do you have what it takes That's right. to go back with God? Look at the love of money. You men out there in the entertainment industry, look at how much you love money. Love you money. sell your dignity and get dressed up like a woman. That's you right. pervert. That's you right. Hollywood pervert. Go ahead. Just to make 20 or 30 million dollars, use a Hollywood pervert. Go ahead. I don't care if you're black, white, Hispanic, or Asian, or Indian, you're a pervert. That's right. Real man won't put on a dress for nobody. That's right. That's right. Love him. Love him. Do you know how of an honor it is hmm. to be made in God's image? Hallelujah. Let us make men. And our image after our likeness. And now I'm going to distort the image hmm. to put on a dress. Lord. That alone is blasphemy. That's blasphemy. Because if I was made in the image of God, God don't look like a woman. That's right. That's blasphemy. That's right. That's blasphemy. Charge them. Charge them that are rich, oh, you rich in this folk. world. You rich folk got a lot to learn. You run to Jake's for refuge. Huh. You run to Benny Hill and all these other fellas, Benny Hinn and and you feel like you're in a godly atmosphere, like Tyler Perry, a cross dresser, lay hands on Jake, Jake, and he's supposed to be a man of God in the spirit. <laughs> My Lord. <laughs> Tyler Perry got his hands on him, and he laying there with the cameras on him. <laughs> That's right. An abomination. Yeah. Laying his hands on a false prophet. That's right. Go ahead, man. Go well, ahead. he's a Christian. He ain't no Christian. No. How he a Christian and his mouth is so foul, cussing as some bad Madea. That's right. Cussing at will. At cussing will. at will. Go ahead. A Christ-like man don't dress like a woman. That's right. A Christ-like man don't dress like a woman. A Christ-like man don't dress like a woman. Go ahead. Don't do it. Go ahead. Man. Are you listening? Go ahead. Man. Go ahead. Man. You Hollywood celebrities that watch the truth of God. You sell your dignity, fella. Mm -hmm. You love money more than you love your own flesh. That's right. Love of money. As manly as Wesley Snipes act. Yes, I call your name. You don't like it. What do I care? Amen. He got dressed up like a woman, as black as he is, with a blind wig and lipstick. My Lord. What's the matter with these men? That's right. Love of money. The love of money is the root of the all source evil. Of how much? All evil. You can't offer me a dime that'll make me sell out on God. Go right. I'd rather be 
tilt first before I sell out on God. That's right. That's right. Either you save or you're not. Either God is first or he's not. You preachers that are reaching out to us and claim you want to walk with the truth of God, if you ain't all out for God, stay where you're at. That's right. Don't come here. That's right. We're not begging. Don't come here. Don't come this way with the expectation to think anything going to change. That's right. God rules here. Go ahead. Do you hear what the word says? In 1 Timothy 6 and at verse 10. Says what? For the love of money. The love. Amen. Some of these preachers didn't preach this stuff. There was a television station that logged on to our program out of Africa and saw us on YouTube. And they could not believe that we were preaching this message. They said because the prosperity preachers in America, now the preachers in Africa are imitating them. And you know our African brothers and sisters are not rich. Yeah. Most of them are poor, right. dirt poor. Yeah. But these greedy dogs that pose yeah. as pastors. Yeah. God told them this. God, have you noticed God is always telling these fellas to get money from people? Right. Why you don't hear the voice says repent? Amen. Be baptized, yes, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It's like I've said on many occasions, when we come and want to set up a church and come to the people, we don't come to them faking them and bamboozling right. them. Right. We come tell them, hey, look, we need a church in such and such and such an area. Like this building here in Baltimore. It was a library. You would never think it was a library. And I remember when you first came in here, the ceiling wasn't this high. They built a second story. There was no balcony. There was bookcases lined up. And I remember my wife said to me, Gino, this, this is too small. I said, ignore the bookcases. She started mocking me. She said, I can't. <laughs> Vernon came to me. He said, bro, Gino, don't you think this is too small, man? He, we can't work in here. I said, Vernon, long as you've been around me, I got a vision. Yeah. He said, well, good Lord, man, better than you than me. <laughs> <laughs> but nobody could see it. Could see it. I got together with Raj. I said, Raj, I want the whole second floor gone. <laughs> he said, consider it gone. <laughs> I said, we're going to build a balcony. The old plaster, I want to strip the plaster off and see what's back there. He stripped the piece off. I said, oh, stone back there. Every place that's plaster up to these columns and those columns, strip them. Mm -hmm. And then repoint them. And then sandblast them. And then glaze them. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. <laughs> if God having given us a vision, you think we'll go from state no to way. state by faith? No way. My faith drives me to go from state to state, from country to hallelujah. Glory to God. My faith in God. Hallelujah. Wonderful, brother. It drives me. Wonderful, brother. Go ahead. It drives me from state to state. Go ahead. That's I was wonderful. telling the brothers the other day of a place we go, we have to go to. We've never been there. He said, what you think going to happen? I said, man, we got victory before we got tickets. <laughs> before we got plane tickets. The city belongs to the truth of God. Hallelujah. What did he tell Joshua? Every place. Where the sole of your feet shall tread. Hallelujah. He said, I will give it to you. That's right. Oh. Hallelujah. You angry viewers that's hoping for the demise of First Church. You mm -hmm. might as well start digging a Grand Canyon in your backyard. That's right. Truth will never end. 
unless you kill God. That's right. And God can't die. That's right. The book says, For the love of the money. Love, give chapter and verse. First Timothy chapter 6 and at verse 10. This is the danger of love and money. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Listen at what happens. Which while some coveted after. Wait a minute. What happened? While some coveted after. They didn't say they even have it yet. Mm. While some coveted. While some desire it. What do they do, Williams? They have erred they from have the faith. They have erred from God's belief. And, and pierced, pierced themselves, themselves through, through. With many sorrows. Sometimes people bring great stress and great pain upon themselves because they want riches so bad. That's true. Look how the worthless liars preach this prosperity junk. If you want God to give you an X amount of money, you got to give an X amount of money. Benny Hinn taught that for years. Yeah. For God to give you the wealth, you got to give him a certain amount of money. In other words, you got to buy your wealth from Jesus. Buy you. Well, look, if I need some money, I need it from him. That's right. So why do I got to give, pay him off, yeah. <laughs> pay God off, That's right. and then he look at my offering and then dump money on me? That's right. Blessings come under one heading, obedience That's right. and humility. That's right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Amen. Like I said, when we came here and when we got the saints together and many of them couldn't see it, I told them, don't worry about it. God gave me the vision. Don't worry about it. They all sacrificed a thousand dollars a head. I didn't tell them. The Lord spoke to me, harumba, rumba, rumba, haya, 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 Aladdin, the red carpet and the genie. I didn't do that. <laughs> we told them, look, let's sacrifice a thousand dollars a head. They went to work like clockwork. God bless us with the place. Amen. This is what we did every place. Amen. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Hallelujah. So, when you do, God proved to us, he has proven to us, brothers and sisters, we do not have to take shortcuts. We ain't got to lower the standard of God. That's, right. That's why people are shocked when they see the truth of God and see all these people. They shocked that people will be attracted to such a strict, hard teaching. Everybody don't want no sugar. Oh, no. People know what it takes to get right. It takes a good, hard gospel. Because the devil is tough. The devil ain't dropping no sugar and being easy with you. And the devil going to beat you down without mercy. That's right. Listen. For the love of money is the root of all evil. What happened, William? Which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith. Now, a lot of times people pursue for money have caused them to error from the faith. From the faith. They shake hands with the devil. They align themselves with Satan. Yeah. Break law, sell their morals, ignore the Bible, and then at the shortcut say, well, I can repent. Mm -hmm. They forget that the Lord said he will have mercy on whom he will have mercy. Now, suppose God choose not to have mercy on you and accept your repentance. That's a chapter sellout. That's right. Listen. Which while some coveted after. While some was being covered just after it. They, they have, have erred, erred from the faith. They have erred from erred. the belief. They have took the belief of the apostles that they got from Jesus, threw it out the window. Now, two gods in heaven. Now, women preachers. Now, divorce and remarry. All of the oh, folly gosh. that the Bible is against, now they come along. Now the women wear mini skirts and splits. Don't have to cover your head. Everything they used to be against. And the Bible says this, if you build up again the things you destroy, you make yourself a transgressor. transgressor. Real quick. And pierce themselves through with many sorrows. But what? But thou, man of thou God. Thou, old people of God, what should we do? Flee these things. Run away from that stuff, and what should we follow? And follow after righteousness. Follow after what's right? Godliness. What's of God? Faith. That which pertains to the belief of God? Love. Love. Patience. Be patient. Meekness. Be humble. Fight the good fight of faith. What should we hold on to, William? Lay hold on eternal life. That's what I'm holding on to. That's right. They hold. I ain't holding on to nothing they but don't. eternal life. What? Whereunto, Whereunto thou, art, thou also called, art also called. And has professed, and has professed, a, good professed profession. a good profession before. Many witnesses. Oh, hallelujah to God before many witnesses. That's right. Charge them. Charge them. Let's close out with let not 
The wise man, glory in his wisdom. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 9, and at uh, verse 23. I want everyone to listen at this. Let's close out on this. Jeremiah 9 and verse 23. Follow me. Thus saith the Lord. God is talking. Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. All right, you got your PhD, your DD, you're a professor, you're a dean, you work in your college, you got your own business, you know how to negotiate. Don't glory in it. That's right. Don't glory in it. What's That's the right. matter with you? Don't glory in that folly. That's right. Uh -huh. Neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Uh-oh. God can take your muscles and pluck them in the sand. Oh, yeah. And you can do a 1,000 push-ups a minute. That's quick. <laughs> God can snatch your breath right out your body. That's right. I want all my viewers to understand something. Even you arrogant, self-righteous haters who can't help but watch the telecast on That's YouTube. Right. And you can't help but make your comments because you're working for Satan. And whenever there's a new program, your father say, log on. <laughs> That's right. The devil say, log on. And the devil say, say something for me. <laughs> and then you spew out your venom towards this message because you're working for your father, the devil. The devil say, say something for me. Amen. <laughs> say something against the truth of God. Amen. Say something about that Genesis because I want to pull him down and make him like you. Yeah. Go ahead, man. Go ahead. Are you listening? Amen. The word says what? Thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. So to all my haters, and I say to all the brothers and sisters of the truth of God worldwide, and I say, oh, don't waste your time arguing with people about the message. Let them call me any name. Yeah. They can call me Shrek, Donkey, Godzilla, King Kong, Amen. Pinocchio, <laughs> Hansel and Gretel, Porgy Pig, Daffy Duck. They can call me whatever they want. Whatever they like. But when it's done, mm -hmm. they're going to have to come back. Now, there's many more Hebrew Israelites coming to the meetings. When I was in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 93 went down in water in the name of Jesus Christ. Hebrew Israelites came and got baptized Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I met a sister here last night who said she was a Hebrew Israelite. She went down in the water. In the name of Jesus Christ, she said, pray for me, Pastor Jennings. I want that Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Can't get away from it. Amen. We're going to come back to what God said. That's right. Who, Pastor Jen, and everybody. You're going to do this? Oh, yes, you You will. can hate me till you get stiff as a corpse, huh. but you're going to obey this right here. That's right. What did he say? Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Yes. Neither let the mighty man glory in his might. I had some men keep writing me. Why don't you debate me? Why don't you debate me? Pastor Jen is scared of me. You couldn't get a fly to believe that. Pastor Jennings, would you debate everybody? No. No way. No. Why won't you, Pastor Jennings? A lot of these folks don't mean no good. That's right. They just want to use our airtime to make a name for themselves. That's right. That's why I won't debate all of you. No. You're so simple. <laughs> Amen. When I was in Monroe, Louisiana, some about three years ago, and my first time, that wasn't my, I think it was, that, was it my first time there? First or second time? And we telecast from there, I believe, for the first time. And... When they introduced us, I, didn't, I wasn't standing up no more than two minutes. A man threw his hand up. I said, yes, sir. I'm here to debate you. Where's the cameras? Where's Do you the got, cameras? No, we wasn't telecasting that way. That's right. We wasn't telecasting that on that day. He said, where's the cameras? <laughs> Is the cameras here? That's what he said. That's what Am he I said. right, William? Amen. I said, you want cameras? I said, I ain't going to waste my time to debate you. You want to be seen. Yeah. He said, wait a minute. I flew all the way from Chicago. <laughs> I said, that's your business. <laughs> I didn't ask you to come here. Yep. Flew all the way from Chicago because he wanted to be seen on camera. On camera. Go get a Hollywood contract. That's right. That's why I want to debate a lot of these fellas. Yeah. And some say, well, you debate this one. That's right. Mm -hmm. Not that I think you will win. No. I, I don't <laughs> think true. that. I, I'm lying to myself. <laughs> like a man in Detroit. No, I was in... Uh, Milwaukee, and a preacher reached out to me from Chicago, 
and said, I'm going to meet you in Milwaukee to debate you about Jesus Christ being God. I said, you don't want to do that. I said, I, I strongly encourage you. In fact, I even said, my brother. I called him brother. I said, what church you go to? He said, I go to an apostolic church. I said, you got women preachers? He said, well. <laughs> he said, I don't believe in women preachers, Pastor Jennings, but my bishop got them. I said, why are you there? He said, well, he said, I, he said I agree with a lot of things you preach. He said, in fact, you help me learn a lot of stuff. He said, but this Jesus Christ is God. You don't know what you're talking about. He said, let me he said I'm deep now. I'm deep, Pastor Jennings. He said, let me tell you something. Christ is Jesus' last name. That's so deep, it's nowhere in the Bible. <laughs> you see, that's sad. I say, listen, I'll tell you what you do, brother. Go back and watch the different messages when I'm teaching Jesus Christ as God, and uh, you will see what I'm talking about. I said, but don't come to Milwaukee to debate me. And I said, because, in fact, I mentioned to him. I said, when you're in the airport, you hear that announcement come over. If anyone leaves bags uh, unattended, it shall be confiscated and destroyed. I said, listen, brother, you come, you're going to be destroyed. <laughs> I said, I'm telling you. I said, so, you know, I said, listen, you know, I, I, you may be a good brother, but so watch the program. He didn't come either. He didn't. He didn't come. He didn't. Because I had a Jesus Christ as God beaten laid up for him. <laughs> well, Pastor Jenny, you said no man is God. That's right. right. Well, didn't Jesus, wasn't he born of the virgin? Yes and no. His body was, but he always was. He always was. Like Smith asked me in the debate from the Church of God in Christ. Mm -hmm. He said, is Jesus on the throne? I said, yes. He said, was he always on the throne? I said, yes. He said, okay. Yeah, yeah you know. know. You know. That's right, Smith. That's right. He still watched the program. In fact, he texts me. He still texts me asking me Bible questions. Wonderful. I believe he's a sincere brother. He's just misled. As all Church of God and Christ followers are misled. Did you hear me? I said all of them. Not some of them. All of them. Every human that's in the Church of God and Christ are misled. Now let me close out with Acts 2.38. Then Peter said unto them, repent. Brothers and sisters, rich folk out there mm -hmm. who thank you so good because you got a Bentley or a Rose, a Mercedes. Look, a Mercedes is affordable today. Even a Maybach is affordable if you know where to get them. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, man, when the Maybach first came out, there was close to a half million dollars. Now you can get one for about $30,000. You want to say, what? Yeah, $30,000. You just got to know where to get them. That's all. <laughs> you want to say, what? Oh, yeah. You just got to know where to get them. That's all. Supposed to be riding around. I spent $500,000. Someone got the same thing. $25,000. <laughs> uh, $25,000, I said. That's right. You see what I'm talking? Amen. Do you see what I'm telling you? So, folks, Amen. they glory in the most foolishest thing. Be able to know yourself. Know what you can handle and what you can't. Know what you can handle. Someone say, well, I'm going to try and see. All right. But I'm telling you, what you try, you may get in so deep, you can't get out. Yeah, that's true. Because then it may take you over. That's right. And then you're taken over by it. And then depart from God, and then the world become your God. Repent. Repent. And be baptized. Every one of you. I want to say to Brother Kenneth Fort Leroy, who's, uh, what is it, Yusef Solomon? Yusef Solomon. If that's your new name, all right, that's all right. I can call you Yusef Solomon. Solomon, Solomon, come on back to God. That's right. Repent of your sins. Okay. Don't let the devil cut you off out there, Solomon. Amen. Remember, King Solomon went away from God and died that way. That's right. Solomon, you Seth, come on and get your life right with God. Amen. God is giving you a chance while you got breath, Brother Solomon. Amen. This is a good message. Amen. 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 I mean, one thing I say about Solomon, Amen. Kenneth. Anybody try to say anything about Pastor Jennings out there in his circle? Kenneth, he steps to them. 
he lay him out. He tell him, yeah, he said, listen, that's, that's a good man. I remember he was talking. He called me. Called me about a month or two ago. And someone, he was telling me, trying to talk some smack, if I use the term, about Pastor Jim. He said, wait, 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 wait. He asked, they didn't know that St. Kenneth, or uh, Brother Solomon, was a former soldier. Mm -hmm. And he asked, do you know that man? They said, no. He said, all right, then. Keep your mouth off him. He said, because I know him. Mm. He, said, he said, that Jennings, he's a good man. Don't you say nothing else about him. He got that <laughs> Yousef look. <laughs> Come on back to God, everybody that left him. That's right. Everybody. Everything that had backslid for even before I was born. Your breath is in your nostrils, being lent to you, giving you a time before your body expires. That's right. Repent! And be baptized. And be baptized. Every one of you. How? In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, what? For the remission of sins. This is how you get your sins washed away. Amen. You must go down in water, your whole body must go down in the water in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, meaning for the removal of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You have the Holy Ghost, you have God, you have the Holy Spirit, and that's what everybody needs. Anybody here want to get right with God and be baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ to escape the flames of hell? If you want it, stand on your feet today if you want it. Amen. Nobody? We got one? Wonderful. All right, you that are standing, you can, we got another. You that are standing, all of you that are standing, you can go right where they are. And if there's anyone downstairs that I can't see, you stand up until they get down there. Uh, Brother Webb, he's gone already, huh? Amen. All right, glory to God. Right, it's a wonderful thing to come on God's side. Everybody come on God's side. So you that want to be baptized, you can go down that stairway. Right there, if you need help with anything, just let us know. Now we're going to go ahead and let you go. Next session will start at 5 o'clock, but it's 20 minutes to 3. Oh, yeah, all right, yeah. We'll start prayer at 5 o'clock. And then, God willing, we'll get in here and get a chance to let you go. Let someone give bro brother a hand. Someone let one of the brothers, if he got to go down, help him with the child in the stroller. You help him now. Let the brothers help him. Brothers, help me give him a hand and whatnot. Amen. Give him all the help he needs. We thank God for you. Let us all stand. Don't block the brother and the sister in. Give them a hand if they need help. You brothers, give them the help that they need. We're going to ask Pastor Singletary to close us out in prayer. Most Heavenly Father, in the blessed name of Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for the word of truth that was spoken by the man of God. We ask, Lord God, that you will look down upon our hearts and soul and help us to receive your word. And as we leave this place and go about our daily living, Lord God, help us to be mindful which, which, which we have heard, that our lives, Lord God, may be changed. And if we have been affected by riches, Lord God, help us, Lord God, to put them down. Lord God, remember the man of God. Continue to give him strength in his body to go from city to city and from country to country. Lord God, remember us ministers as we minister throughout the temples, Lord God. Help us to teach thy word and only thy word. In the name of Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.